Hey, welcome back to Revamped Outdoors. On this episode, I'm going to show you how not to design something. Hey, so uh, last video we were talking about uh, headlights that I put on the ATC, Honda 200 ES. If you don't know what that is, it's a three-wheeler. There's a couple videos back now that'll explain it. I'll put those down in the description below. But anyway, I bought this thing for ice fishing. And when you're ice fishing, it's pretty cold. So I wanted a couple different things on it. I wanted heated hand warmers because I'm spoiled, you know. And I also wanted uh, lights, the spotlights that I've talked about on previous episode. These are just two inch uh, 40 watt Cree LED lights. They actually light up the marsh on my duck boat so I figured they'd be perfect on the Honda three-wheeler. So what I ended up doing was wiring those two parallel running off the battery on the relay. I needed a switch for that. And then I also needed a switch to turn on the actual heated warmers either high, low, or off. Those switches are the same, actually. The same, I don't know, they're 20 millimeter diameter switches, and they have a small 2 millimeter offset hole in there. So basically, what I did is I got into Fusion 360. I sketched out kind of what I wanted as far as placement of the switches. And then what I did was I took a picture uh, as parallel to as as much as a straight face as I could on the handlebars. Took a picture of that with a tape measure next to it so I could actually calibrate that in Fusion 360. I brought it into Fusion 360. I found the center point all the way through the handlebar. And what I did then is I actually just ran a spline up into that handlebar the best as I could. I also used a, a conic, conic curve, I believe it's called, where you can actually move that curve at differing points. So it keeps one continuous curve instead of doing multiple splines. In Fusion 360 sketches, the best thing you can do for yourself is to do it all in one piece as much as possible. That way when you do a function with Fusion 360, like you create or a body, extrude, press pull, make a pipe, any of these things, or a sweep, it has one nice path to use instead of using multiples because then it just gets confused and the whole thing just freaks out. So tried my best to just do it in one smooth motion to create the handlebar in three-dimensional space. I got a measurement off the diameter of the handlebar and then I just ran a pipe in there and I designed around that knowing that I could have these switches uh, fit around that handlebar. Basically how I designed it was a front face that had two uh, holes in it for bolts that could go to the other side with actual nuts. So these were M3 bolts with the standard M3 nut on the back panel. And then what I did was I designed it uh, just to be screwed in together all the way through into the PETG. I like using PETG for this sort of thing. It's a lot more durable and it has a lot more give to it. It's a lot more forgiving than PLA. So anyway, I got some red PETG, printed out this uh, this whole deal, I got that printed out, um, and then I had to put in the wiring. So what I did was offset some small areas for the wires to come into, and then I put it all together, spacing out everything that I needed to. I actually made the print, I'm running low on red PETG, so of course what I did is I over made the diameter of the handlebar pipe slightly larger than I needed so I could arbor it with some electrical tape and it seemed to work just fine. It holds in there nice and snug, doesn't move uh, on the handlebar at all. And that gave me some, gave me some wiggle room. All that seemed to work out really well. So I put it all together and of course my measurements for the push connectors onto the back of the switches weren't long enough so the plate actually ended up push, pushing the switches out towards the front. So what I ended up doing was I went back into Fusion 360. I press pulled out the back of the design a little, a, like by about 20 millimeters, I think. Then I just did a split body function, cut off the back, and used that as an insert. So I put the insert in between the front unit that I had printed total and then the back plate. 
and that seemed to work out really well. I used, I think, uh, 35 millimeter screws on the back, and I just screwed 15 millimeters. I threaded 15 millimeters into a 2.8 diameter hole in the PETG, and that's going to hold just fine. It's not so much stress um, on that portion as much as the portion that actually holds onto the handlebar. So, so far so good. It's still holding on there and it works really well. But I think this was a really good example of you can design something in C2 and you think you have everything just figured out, right? You have it just, oh, it's perfect. But it never is. It's always going to need iterations. You're always going to have to think around stuff. And I think that's my favorite part about doing these kind of designs is I have something I need to figure out the solution to a problem. And when it becomes difficult, uh, sometimes you just have to take a step back and you have to be okay with it, you know, and you just come back and keep working at it. And if you do that, you're going to succeed at it. No matter what you're, what you're doing, it's going to happen. It's just going to take some extra time. And the difference between people that get it done and people that don't is just that small bit. So don't give up when you think it's getting tough. Just keep on fighting through it, and you'll be able to figure out anything you need to. You might just have to print out 14 of them to do it. Hopefully this inspires you to go do similar things or make an accessory box for something totally different. doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be an ATV. It doesn't have to do anything with outdoors. But uh, anything you put your mind to, you'll be able to do it eventually. Is it 100% right? No. I'm sure I'll get a bunch of comments on way easier ways to do it, but if it was fun for me, it worked. And hopefully somebody out there learns something from it or gets something from it or gets inspired by it. So, yeah. If you liked the video, maybe consider subscribing. Uh, we're getting people now, and we're getting, you know, if you subscribe, I might get a new chair. It won't be $3.99, though. I'll tell you that right now. If you liked the video, maybe give it a like. Uh, would love it because YouTube really doesn't promote anything unless it's got a million likes or 12 million dislikes. Am I right? Anyway, keep your amps up and your filament dry.